<laughs> Thank you, Sue. You want to do it again? No. Go ahead. We, we didn't have our mics on, so if we can uh, have the uh, quote read again, please. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Mayor. There is, there is a value to having common goals, and the only way to create them is to listen to each other before we push our own agendas or dismiss the opposition. Thank you again, Sue. And the uh, roll call, please. Boren. Here. Bauk. Excused. Bowers. Here. Decker. Here. Gisha. Here. Hannah. Here. Heidemann. Here. Koth. Here. Kittleson. Here. Kleunis. Here. Montemayor. Here. Rinfleisch. Here. Zurich. Here. Vanderweel. Here. Vu. Here. And Wangaman. Here. Fifteen present. Quorum is present. Uh, we will now be led in the Pledge of Allegiance by Alderman Decker. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Alderman Decker. Okay, we need approval of the minutes of the uh, last council meeting. President Bourne. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. I move to approve the minutes from the last meeting. Second. Motion and a second. Under discussion? And it should be for the special meeting also. Okay, and also these would uh, be to approve the uh, minutes from the special meeting that we had. I'll include that in my motion. Second. And a second. Under discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I have a uh, proclamation. This is the DNR Lab of the Year Award for our folks from our Sheboygan Wastewater Treatment Plant. Dale Dorr, Tom Toko, and Al Zangler, who is, Al is not able to be here this evening. is a proclamation, Office of Mayor, City of Sheboygan. Whereas the Sheboygan Wastewater Treatment Facility was recently recognized by the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources with the 2009 Register Laboratory of the Year Award. And whereas they were recognized in the large facility category for being exceptionally well grounded in the fundamentals of quality control and making outstanding efforts to produce quality data. And whereas the Sheboygan Wastewater Treatment Facility extensively utilizes control charts to monitor quality control results and has an excellent system for capturing discharge monitoring report qualifications. And whereas Wastewater Department Superintendent Dale Dorr, Lab Supervisor Al Zangler, and Lab Analyst Tom Toko take a great deal of pride in their work and in producing quality of, quality of laboratory data. Now therefore, I, Bob Ryan, by virtue of the authority vested in me as mayor of the city of Sheboygan, do hereby congratulate our Sheboygan water, wastewater team on uh, being awarded the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources 2009 Register, Registered Laboratory of the Year Award. And I encourage all citizens of the city of Sheboygan in join, to join me in recognizing their efforts to continue to offer quality data to the DNR to enable them to make regulatory decisions that protect natural resources and provide a healthy, sustainable environment. In testimony whereof, I have hereunto set my hand and caused the great seal of the city of Sheboygan to be affixed, done this first day of June in the year of our Lord, 2009, signed by myself. I would like to add, um, the wastewater treatment plant is, is one facility in our city that has consistently outperformed basically everybody in the state. Uh, Superintendent Dale Dorr, has constantly strived to operate a wastewater plant that is cost effective and environmentally sound. And it's amazing that he has, you know, he's, he's taken these strides on his own with the consent of council, but uh, himself and his staff, I mean, they are what this says right here, 
they're the best in their field, and I congratulate them. Thank you. Uh, somewhat overwhelmed, I guess, but uh, the lab is, has uh, won this award, and even though it specifically talks about the laboratory and the work they do down there, it's every one of the 16 employees down there that works, that makes this system work. Uh, we have visitors from, uh, I've had visitors from Ecuador, Chile, uh, and across the United States to come and see our facility because of the innovative technology that, that we have installed down there. Uh, there's a lot of uh, facilities that come in, even in the state, that I've got visitors coming this week and next week to look at the system. So uh, we put ourselves on the map, and I hope uh, that we can continue in that direction. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to say that even though we received this at the wastewater treatment plant for the importance we put into uh, helping to protect the environment, it actually is an award for the whole community because we're a reflection of the importance that the community puts on protecting our environment. Thank you. If I may add, I don't know if everybody recalls, but a couple of years ago on the council we got a calendar from the uh, wastewater treatment plant and it showed our our methane turbines that we have down there that actually uh, produce electricity from the methane that bubbles up out of the good stuff that they have down there. And uh, on the next page next to ours was uh, Florence, Italy. So it goes to show you that our stuff is just as good as the people over in Florence. <laughs> Okay, moving on. Uh, public forum. All right, this evening we have uh, Richard Susha. <coughs> Dick, can you pull the mic so that we can hear you and I will need your home address, please. 15 North Point Drive. And you will have five minutes, sir. Okay. Mayor Ryan and Alderman, I am representing the Sheboygan County Taxpayer Alliance this evening, and we thank you for addressing many of the proposals we submitted to you last June of 08. While all the items were not addressed, the ones that were are having a positive effect on the taxpayers of Sheboygan. And for that, you are to be congratulated. SCT is also encouraged by the star resolution you recently passed. We request that you continue your positive efforts in addressing our 2009 proposals. We refrain from listing any wants, such as a new voting board for the council. And so we fully understand the enormous economic dilemma you're facing this year and our 2009 proposals stay focused on a feasible suggestion to institute now and some for the future. So we submit the following items for your consideration and action this year. Uh, there is a summary which I will go over this evening and then the entire proposal is attached uh, to your agenda. Uh, under cuts and concessions, cut national conferences, cut all national imp uh, capital improvements except streets and sewers, cut employee free parking, and stop personal use of city vehicles. Cut full-time employees, hire part-time wherever possible, renegotiate health care coverage, renegotiate residency requirements, and renegotiate contracts to allow outsourcing. Some of these have been addressed in the past year or two. Under privatization, contract park work, contract garbage and plowing either throughout the city or partial, and replace the city attorney with a corporate counsel. Under consolidation, Close one firehouse 
as is now being proposed, return the Tourism Department back to the Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce and eliminate the bid director and utilize the chamber. Under shared services, we feel that the combined dispatch should be expedited, not in a five-year period. And you should consider combining purchasing and cleaning for the city, county, and schools. And you should consider expanding the transit service, which is vital to Sheboygan and the area, and consider expanding water service and wastewater treatment service to more communities. And you should also consider a county-wide, county-run library, Maywood Environmental Park, and a Wildwood Baseball Complex to be county-run. For possible revenue sources, you should actively seek annexation. You should review all tax-exempt property in the city of Sheboygan. And you should look and in increase, if possible, the building inspection fees, boat ramps, fishing shanty rentals, community centers, and so forth. And you should also follow through on the committee suggestions to hire a city administrator. Reduce the mayor to part-time. Reduce the aldermen from 16 to 10 to 8. And eliminate the mayoral assistant. Under miscellaneous, insist on transparency in the fire department ambulance service costs. And reestablish every other week community, committee of the whole meetings and scrutinize the budget, the city budget, at these committee of the whole meetings line for line. And you have already talked about initiating a comprehensive priority study of departments and services, which we certainly agree with. We feel also you must have a 10-year development plan and a five-year plan for streets. And we wonder whatever happened to the vehicle leasing proposal that came up this past year. Nothing has been heard. We also in... Excuse me, Dick, would you like your additional minute? Yes, please. Go ahead. We also encourage industrial revenue bonds and start expanding that industrial park by using the million dollars owed to it from the police department. And there is a new state ruling that allows the cities to expand the TIF districts by a half a mile. Uh, in close, you will find an article from the Sentinel Journal that addresses that issue, and it certainly should help the, the street situation in Sheboygan without bonding for them. So in conclusion, we again respectfully request that the mayor and aldermen address these issues presented at this session of the Common Council in a positive way to improve the quality of life for the taxpayers of Sheboygan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Susha. That's it. <clears throat> okay, next up we have the mayor's comments, which is always one of my favorite parts. <laughs> um, first of all, I have a couple of announcements. These are my type of announcements. These are fun things. Um, Roar on Sheboygan Shores is going to take place June 12th and 13th, which is uh, the weekend after this, on both uh, Friday and uh, Saturday. Um, day and evening, it will begin uh, Friday uh, from, uh, I believe it's Friday afternoon, and will go through Saturday evening. Uh, down there they will have uh, some bands on Friday night, Seven Wishes. Um, Saturday, Bobby Evans and the Alimony Blues Band, and uh, Dave Steffen also. Uh, there's going to be a lot of different events down there. It's a, it's a, uh, if you've never been down there, it's a heck of a lot of fun. Also on Saturday the 12th, same evening, um, there is a benefit for the Sharon S. Richardson uh, Hospice called the Fashion on the Lake Benefit, which is also down on the South Pier District. It is in a tent. Uh, there are still tickets available for that. Uh, there's going to be some, uh, some top-notch people modeling down there, including myself. So come and you know, <laughs> have some fun. Uh, 
<laughs> and uh, if you want some information, uh, Linda Jar is, uh, is coordinating a lot of that, and her phone number is 8033117. 100% of the proceeds of this go to the Sharon Richardson Hospice. It's a very good event, so I'd appreciate uh, people supporting these efforts. Um, we had the start, which I, I appreciate some of uh, Mayor Susha's comments here, because we did start last Friday uh, the groundwork for our long-term strategic plan for the city. We had a retreat, which uh, we should have called it more of a, uh, an advance than a retreat because we felt like we're going forward. Um, but we got together, myself, uh, President Gisha, Vice President, President Boren, Vice President Gisha, thank you very much, uh, and all of our department heads. We got together out on Cedar Lake at a uh, private residence out there and started our long-term plan. We had a facilitator provided by CIVMIC so the entire day did not cost the taxpayers anything except to pay us to obviously survive. Um, what, we, what we got out of that was a lot of, uh, a lot of camaraderie that's been missing between department heads in the city. You know, I look at tonight's, uh, tonight's quote and it says, there is a value to having common goals and the only way to create them is to listen to each other before we push our own agendas or dismiss the opposition. That's basically, that was the groundwork for this day. And I believe we, uh, we, we have that feeling, that belief, and that cooperation that is going to exist between our different departments. What we did is <clears throat> um, everybody sat down and, and, and basically gave a, a couple of minute or two uh, uh, rendering of what they felt they wanted to get out of that day, which was pretty productive to start the day. Then we went through and everybody wrote down a couple of accomplishments that they felt that they've accomplished in either their political career or their departments over the last year. So we started out on a positive note. Um, then we all wrote down five to half a dozen, six, seven different items in the city that we thought should be addressed, need to be addressed, whether they be something positive, um, that is something new for the city, or something that we are simply correcting to gain some efficiencies in something that we have right now, or possibly cutting something out altogether. Uh, and out of those, we came up with uh, breaking down into individual, we came up with, I mean, we had probably a hundred different notes posted up on a, on, a, on a board of different ideas. We categorized all them into different uh, categories that we thought they should belong, whether it was efficiency savings or whether it was uh, um, basically cooperation and communication. And then out of those, everybody got 15 votes to put little tick marks on them. Uh, you could vote uh, 15 times, no more than one for every, every uh, issue up there. And we identified the issues that we want to start working on, which is what we're doing right now. Um, now we're, we have, uh, we're going to schedule another meeting with everybody uh, that we get out of the city once again uh, at the end of July, but between now and then we have to accomplish these tasks. We're now having department head meetings um, with all the department heads once a week rather than just on council Mondays to facilitate this process and keep everything moving along. But some of the, uh, some of the ideas that uh, everybody deemed these got the most votes on the initial things to work on right now were uh, one, to expand or develop a new business center and corporate business park. Um, another one, and these aren't, not, aren't in any, any uh, particular order, uh, pr prioritization of all city services. Establish better communications with the county and adjoining towns. Develop a sense of trust between all the department heads and all the members of the Common Council. This is basically a communication thing where everybody gets to know each other. They can work together on common ideas rather than uh, getting surprised sometimes. Not that it's ever happened. Um, create a new management pay plan. We've been working without pay plans in this city and uh, a lot of our non-representative rep represented employees. And uh, we've never differentiated management from uh, non-represented employees. Um, develop uh, a knowledge of the demographics of the city and the changing demographics in the city to, to see that we are, what we are doing is, uh, is positive for all citizens rather than just for um, ourselves 
or what we believe is the right thing to do. We need to figure out exactly who's living in our city and what their needs are. Um, another thing was to uh, foster an environment of open communication and training to facilitate increased trust and respect, respectful relationships among city leadership. Uh, another big one was sustainable union contracts, union contracts that, uh, that the, uh, our, our represented employees, employees can live with and that the city economically can live with in the future. So those were just some of the ideas we came up with and we plan on tackling these and coming up with some solid answers in the next several weeks and then we're going to meet again and move on to the next phase of this. We hope that by the end of the year uh, we do have a long-term uh, strategic plan for the city which will be both a, uh, a plan for our infrastructure, a plan for our business operations, and a plan for long-term sustainability of the city. So we've started it. Uh, we're heading in that direction. We will have this discussed along the way at the Committee of the Whole, that it will be a transparent process, that everything will be out there, that, the, that uh, the citizens will be informed on exactly where we are on this process. And this is why I wanted to bring this up tonight. I uh, thought it was a very good uh, session that we had. I think we had a lot of department heads that took some time to talk to each other that probably haven't in several years. That's the kind of cooperation that we need. We also need the Common Council to buy in the, into this, which is why we're going to have, uh, the, have it discussed at the Committee of the Whole on several, several uh, occasions through the process. I would have liked to have had more members of the Council, but then there would have been uh, you know, some quorum issues and all. So that's why, unfortunately, we had to limit it to uh, President Boren and, Boren and uh, Price, Vice President Gisha. So I thank uh, all our department heads for attending. and. Uh, President Boren and Vice President Gisha, and we shall keep you informed in the future. Thank you. The uh, consent agenda, our own number 51 through 538. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry, if we can hold off, please. Um, Alderman Clayunas. Thank you, I'm sorry, I was a little late on the draw. I'm uh, just reminding all the council members at tomorrow night's committee of the whole meeting here at 530. Uh, if you cannot make it, would you please let me know? Okay. Thank you. And we will be discussing one issue, the deer problem on the north side. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Jean. Now the consent agenda. <coughs> President Bourne. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. I make a motion to accept and file all our O's and accept and adopt all our C's and pass all resolutions and ordinances. Second. We have a motion in the second under discussion. Have a roll call, please. Boren. Aye. Bowers. Aye. Decker. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Koth. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunis. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Surik. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Vu. Aye. And Wangaman. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. We have 539 through 542 to be referred. 543 by the city clerk submitting a communication from the Sheboygan Salmon Cup Committee requesting approval to use the parking lot between the wharf and the Duke of Devon on June 13th and 14th. Looking for a motion. Motion second. to accept and file. And approve. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. 544, uh, by the City Planning Commission recommending adopting the Taylor Drive District Master Plan and resolution number 12-09-10 by Alderman Hanna adopting the Taylor Drive District Master Plan. Alderman Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I <clears throat> move that the RO be accepted and placed on file and that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second under <clears throat> discussion. Alderperson Clayunas. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, it was suggested that maybe this would go to the Committee of the Whole. I don't know if people feel as if... I know we were given this information some time ago and it's been um, synthesized. Uh, it, maybe there's some discussion on that whether we want to d discuss it in the committee of the whole or not. The uh, city planning department was kind of looking at that possibility. 
Would anybody else like to see this go to the Committee of the Whole? It's under discussion. Alderman Bowers? I make a motion that we uh, place it before the uh, Committee of the Whole so it may be uh, discussed by the uh, members of the Committee of the Whole. Second. We do have a motion and a second to send it to the Committee of the Whole. Any further discussion? All in favor of referring this to the Committee of the Whole? Aye. 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 Do that? Mm -hmm. Opposed? It's off to the Committee of the Whole. 545 through 548, 558, excuse me, 545 to 58 to be referred. 559, resolutions introduced three by Alderman Gisha authorizing the submittal of a substantial amendment to the City of Sheboygan's fiscal year 2008-2009 Community Development Block Grant Annual Action Plan slash five-year consolidation consolidated plan to allocate and use American Recovery and Reinvestment Act of 2009 funding. Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. No, just this, just we have a motion in this. And uh, pardon me, uh, this also calls for a uh, uh, motion. For wish to suspend the rules. We do have a uh, motion to suspend second. and a second. Under discussion. I'd like to Alderman Renflesh. I'd like to ask, ask answer Alderman Renflesh's question he's about to ask. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, reason for the suspension um, is that this has to do with with uh, shovel ready project potent projects potentially for community development block grant funds. We need to get the application in quickly. These were additional funds allocated to the city of Sheboygan to, through the economic recovery uh, program, national flow into state and now hopefully will flow to us. That's the reason for the uh, suspension question. So we have a motion and a second to suspend the rules. Any further discussion? All in favor of suspending the rules? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries to suspend the rules. Now we need a, we do have a motion and a second to pass the resolution under discussion. No dis Thank you. Alderman Hanna. Just, just a question on what the, the financial impact on the city is going to be. Uh, what's the total dollar amount that could possibly flow into the city? And has there been any calculation? I know a lot of times what they're counting on, that, that this money is going to stay in our economy and there's going to be a multiplier effect. Has anybody done any work on that? Vice President Kisha. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Yeah, a little. Uh, I say a little only because if you go to the state website where it tracks these <coughs> federal funds that are spinning off uh, this Recovery Act money, for instance, it shows the city of Sheboygan about $2.4 million that we're getting. Well, that's really not quite right. Uh, two million out of the 2.4 are for transit buses. They're going to buy us was well, about a half five to a half dozen transit buses, but we get eighty percent of those funds anyway. So really, that's four hundred thousand dollars. We would have gotten the the one point six from the feds anyway. It's the way it always works. That's how you, all your transit buses you see are purchased. We only pay twenty percent of those costs. So um, in this case, uh, this is additional community development block grant money on top of our normal allocation of community development block grant money. And on top of that, they changed the rules as to how these funds can be used. Generally, uh, the plan um, for the funds, uh, the second level of community development block grant money is for expansion and or retention of new jobs and in development areas that are of different sets of rules than the other block grant money. This is not in non-attainment zones or stuff like that. This can be have a little bit more wide usage. So. The idea of these funds would be to hopefully, and there's plans that you'll see through the council, to uh, put those funds to work to develop tax base, where the other funds are more redevelopment of, which also helps the tax base in the long run, redevelopment of some non-attainment areas. So we're excited about these additional monies. Out of all the additional monies, these seem to be the most that would be able to do what you're talking about doing. Thank you, Vice President Kisha. Any further discussion? Have a roll call, please. Bowers? 
Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Kass? Aye. Thank you. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Zurich? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. And Boren? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion passes. A resolution uh, 5-60 by Alderman Gisha, Boren, and Bob calling on the appropriate city officials and leaders of all unions representing members employed by the City of Sheboygan to gather as the Labor Management Committee to discuss options for assisting the citizens of Sheboygan in these unprecedented economic times. All Vice President Gisha. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. I move that the uh, resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second. Under discussion? If I may continue, thank you, Mayor Ryan. Uh, you know, the city has a lot of meetings. There's a lot of committees. There's, uh, there's a lot of things to attend. And uh, sometimes we get lost in the shuffle of attending those. If citizens were attend to me one meeting this year, if you're concerned about your property tax dollars, it would be this meeting. This meeting is a gathering of our city labor partners, the mayor, and the chairman of the Salary and Grievance Committee this year, Alderperson Corey Bauck. At this meeting is the appropriate venue for the discussion of our economic issues and things that our partners would be willing or non-willing to do. I felt we gave a, a fair presentation a few months ago with the Committee of the Whole and discussed our economic issues and asked for help and ideas from our labor partners. The, there has been none in response. We asked again, and there has been none in response. So this is a formality. So nobody can say nobody was asked. We're asking. We've got problems. There's a 1.5% raise scheduled to go in effect in July, and I believe another raise in December. We have issues. We have huge financial issues, and this is an open meeting to be held July, June pardon me, June 10th. June 10th, now that meeting is the same night as the Public Protection and Safety Committee meeting. Normally these meetings are held on the third floor of, the, of uh, City Hall. I urge the mayor and Alderman Bauck, I'll send him a note as well, to hold this meeting right here on TV so that the citizens can see in an open meeting format a give and take between labor and the employers, which are all the city residents who are watching here tonight, and, and with a formal asking for help during these economic times. And I think it would be wonderful and open and good government to have as many citizens who have interest to be here or to be watching on TV. So I, I didn't put that in the resolution, but I urge that it be televised <laughs> and used, uh, use your best discretion. Thank and you. thank you for that suggestion, <laughs> Vice President Gisha. We greatly appreciate that. That will be on uh, June 10th at 5 o'clock PM. So we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. 561 through 563 lies over. Report of Committee 6, 564 by law and licensing recommended denying beverage operators license number 7394 based upon the applicant's failure to cooperate with the committee and, re rec and record of violations related to the licensed activity. President Boren. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. I move that the report of the committee be accepted and adopted. Second. We have a motion and a second. Under discussion? Under discussion, uh, Mayor, is Holly Zimmerman here tonight? She's not here, Your Honor. Uh, Ms. Uh, Ms. Zimmerman had two opportunities to uh, appear before the Law and Licensing Committee, the second one by certified mail. She failed to appear, and for the reasons you mentioned previously, the the uh, lack of cooperation with the uh, committee and her violations re uh, related to the license activity. The uh, committee voted unanimously not to grant the license. Thank you, President Boren. Any further discussion? <coughs> Take a roll call on this, and a yes vote will be to deny the license. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Montemayor? Rinfleisch, Aye. Zurich, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Vu, Aye. Wangaman, Aye. Born, Aye. and Bowers. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 
Ordinance introduced 10-565 to be referred to Public Works. Matters laid over 11. 4-33, resolution number 10-09-10 by Alderman Clyunas declaring the City of Sheboygan's intent to undertake an energy independent community 25 by 25 planning project in the near future. Alderperson Clyunas. Thank you, Mayor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second, second. Have a motion and a second under discussion. I just like to explain this a little bit. Um, it's in progress right now in a sense. The 25 by 25 planning project is a proposal that's statewide that cities uh, sign up to uh, pledge that by the year 2025, 25% of their energy will come from renewable sources. Um, it happens to be the Alliant Energy uh, goal as well. So 25% of our electricity by 2025 will be coming from uh, renewable sources and this would mean then we'd be looking at other the other energy sources like fuel um, other means that we use for heating and for propelling vehicles uh, as I understand the city uh, buildings were uh, under, underwent an energy audit uh, last two weeks ago well, a week ago Friday by the Alliant Energy which was free and they went through this building and they also went through the city <coughs> Just, just this building, okay, to uh, look at some of the um, ways in which we're using energy and how they could recommend to us to, uh, you know, conserve energy by maybe some new technology or some other uses, um, other means of adjusting the way this building is operated. So um, this is a, a very a forthright and future-looking uh, resolution that should save the city money and put us in line for uh, state monies. W by making this project part of our pledge, we also make ourselves eligible for state grant money. And uh, by June 25th, we are going to be applying for some renewable energy grant money. So this is important for that. Thank you, Gene. Any further discussion? We have a motion and a second. Uh, roll call, please. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kath? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Montemayor? Rinfleisch, Aye. Zurich, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Vu, Aye. Longeman, Aye. Boren, Aye. Bowers, Aye. and Decker. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Matters laid over 4 34, resolution number 11 09 10 by Alder. Alder Persons Gisha Klyunas, Boren, Montemayor, and Heidemann authorizing the finance director to enter into a contract for buildings and property insurance coverage. Vice President Gisha. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Alderman Bowers. Uh, thank you, Your, Mr. Mayor Ryan. Uh, I was wondering if I could just have a copy, I'm not opposing this at all, of 434 and 448, which are insurance contracts. Uh, I would just like to uh, take a look at them. But I'm not trying to stop the passage of it. Okay, um, <laughs> normally on those copies you would obtain those before the meeting? Finance Department. Finance Department yeah. would have them. Finance Department can get All those right. to you. Alderman Rinfleisch. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, my question is, of course, um, uh, regarding the non-bid process. Uh, I am aware that the state of Wisconsin local government property insurance is affordable and uh, or as provide as a reasonable rate as listed in the resolution. Um, just needs some verification that it actually is the lowest possible rate since we haven't gone through a bidding process on this one. Can we have uh, Terry? Would you like to answer that? I guess the question is not would you like to, but will you? So <laughs> our finance director, Terry Hansen. Yes, these these rates that we. Uh, have are approximately about six thousand dollars higher than last year's premium and that the main reason for that increase is the new police department building that that was constructed and moved into last year so that that was accounted for the increase Hello. Thank you, Mr. Uh, question I actually have would be 
uh, well, the Wisconsin Local Property Insurance Fund is reasonable. Do we know if it's actually the lowest available rate uh, since it hasn't gone out for bid yet? We have not gone out for bid to, to check that out, but that is something that we can take under advisement and look at that in the future, up, upcoming renewals. Alderman Bowers. Under 448, the uh, workers' compensation, uh, is that a We're not there yet. Uh, policy first hour coverage, or uh, uh, are we self-insured under workers' compensation? Right, right now, Alderman Bowers, we're still on uh, 434. Oh, all right. 448 will be coming up uh, oh, next. Oh, all right. I'm sorry. Thank you, Terry. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Hannah. Aye. Heideman. Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. Wangaman? No. Boren? Aye. Bowers? No. Decker? Aye. And Gisha? Aye. 12 ayes, 3 noes. Motion carries. 4-48. RC number 26-09-10 by salaries and grievances recommending that the city continue with exchanging. Formerly Cambridge Integrated Services Group, the city's workers' compensation TPA through December 31st, 2009 with the flexibility to change carriers for the year 2010. Vice President Gisha. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Ryan, I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. The RC. Pardon me. Accept. The report of committee be accepted Accept. and adopted. Thanks. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Under discussion? Alderman Rinfleisch? Uh, similar question to the previous issue. Uh, did the, the uh, agreement with exchanging go through the uh, bid process before deciding this is the best opportunity or not? Harry? This was not a, a bid process. This was the company changed ownership in essence. And this is allowing us to continue coverage with the new company under the same contract that we had with Cambridge. And then this opens up the doors for possibility to go out for that, that competitive bid for this administration in 2010. Thank you, Alderman Winfleisch. Thank you, Terry. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Heideman? Aye. Kath? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. And Hannah? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries 4 50, General Ordinance Number 1 09 10 by Alder Persons Bout, Kittleson, Koth, Heidemann, and Gisha, amending the municipal code so as to reclassify the position of cable TV production coordinator. The position goes from non represented to local 1564 of the ASME Union. Gene, do that. Kittleson. Alder Person Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. I would. Uh Ask for a motion to put the ordinance upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second. Under discussion? Under discussion. I think you said it all. It's a, a position that goes from a non-represented to a, a, to a union position. And if I, if I may clarify here, the reason this went from non-represented to a represented position is this was not a confidential position. This was not a professional position. Uh, or a, a, uh, a management position, and therefore the union had the right to make this a representative position. Mm -hmm. So that is why it is now there. Thank you, Gene. Thank you. President Boren? You answered my question here. Thank you. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren, Aye. Bowers, Aye. Decker, Aye. Gisha, Aye. Hannah, Aye. and Heidemann. No. 14 ayes, 1 no. Motion carries. 4-51, general ordinance number 
2-09-10 by Alder Persons Bout Kittleson, Koth, Heidemann, and Gisha amending the municipal code so as to delete the part-time account clerk in the finance department's table of organization. Alder Person Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. I ask for a motion to put the ordinance upon its passage, please. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Uh, under discussion, the same. They, they, they are, that position has been eliminated, I believe, and so it no longer needs to be on that table of organization. Very good. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. Wangman? Aye. Born? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. And Koth? 15 ayes. 4 52, General Ordinance Number 3 09 10 by Alder Persons Decker, Boren, Gisha, Hannah, and Surik, reducing the current salaries of Alder Persons by 6%. Alderman Decker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the ordinance be put upon its passage. We have a motion and a second. Under discussion. Under discussion, Mr. Mayor, I believe, especially during these hard times, it's key that we, as aldermen, lead by example. We will be asking for a lot from our departments in this upcoming year to help us get beyond these challenges, which is why I believe that it is only right that we give a little something back as well. We are all in this together. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Decker. Alder Person Kauf. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. How noble of my fellow aldermen to um, make the suggestion of decreasing our pay. Um, this is full-time work with part-time wages. We make the most important decisions here at City Hall with the least amount of pay. Now, here's the thing. If we wanted to increase our pay, we need three-fourths vote, so 12 aldermen, 12 votes, and that pay will not increase until we are re-elected. To diminish our pay, we need to have... Uh, two-thirds vote, or nine votes, or nine aldermen, and then that pay can be decreased uh, immediately. Uh, the message that we're sending here is if you're thinking about running for alderman and you're on the fence, you know what, at any given time, nine aldermen can say, hey, let's decrease our pay 6%, 25%, 50%, and that goes into effect immediately. I, I really don't think that's the message that we should be sending. Thank you. Alderperson Montemayor. Thank you. Uh, I, I promised Alderman um, Decker that I would support this, and I do reluctantly, even though I looked at my expenses. Uh, right now, after expenses, I make, I clear, $58.34 a year. So this will cost me some money, but I will reluctantly support this. However, I would like to make one amendment. Um, in Section 3, effective for the 2010-2011 council year, I would like to strike and thereafter and change the words to return to the present salary. Second. Thank you. Um, because the common council then can vote again to reduce the wage. But I would like to at least make that amendment so that perhaps we'll come back to the present salary, which is the salary that was when I was elected. And by the way, Alderman, previous Alderman uh, Vanderweel and I, the first year, we reduced our salaries. We gave back 10%. It didn't make a drop's worth of difference. But I'm willing to go support Alderman Decker's motion. So we have a motion and a second. Now we are discussing the amendment. The amendment being that section three in the uh, general ordinance, the words and thereafter shall be struck. So therefore it will read effective for the 2010-2011 council year. The salaries of older persons shall be 4388 per year. Everybody clear on that? This is discussion just on the amendment. No. No, that's, not right. that's not right? Yeah. And Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Um, instead of thereafter, the words will be inserted, return to present salary. Effective for the 2010-2011. And then, and and then, then return, and return to the present, to present salary, salary after, that. after that. Okay. Does that make sense? If you strike the and therefore only, it kind of takes right. care of the whole thing. 
Yeah, this, if you strike no. the end there after, it just says effective for 2010, 2011, yep. it'll be 43. I, I talked with the attorney and he said, no, that would mean we would be zero. Steve? <laughs> <laughs> right, right, if you well, just. We certainly want to change that. <laughs> <laughs> My opinion, if you just struck the thereafter, then you're just setting a salary for the 2010, 2011 council so, year, yeah. and there would be no salary so set this would be zero then. beyond that. Uh, so Alderman Montemayor is suggesting that effective with the 2011-2012 council year, the salary would revert to the current salary of, I believe it's around $4,600. Mm -hmm. 4668 I believe that's the intent of the yes. amendment. Thank you, Attorney McLean. We got that one down, Sue? We, ha we do, I think. Okay. Uh, this is uh, just on the amendment. Alderperson Kittleson. You're good? Okay. Alderman Bowers on the amendment only. Would you like to talk about that? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> I, I was against this uh, from the beginning, 6% reduction. Uh, if we're going to amend it, then I, I take it it's going to be uh, at the beginning of 2010, we will revolt back to original? Uh, no, and, and you will keep your same pay until 2010 in effect of January 1st, 2010 through December 31st. Oh no, this will be for the council year, so that would be. It would be from April, April to April. April. Right. It would be a council year. So April of 2010 Ten. to it the following, be, it, it will drop to six by 6%. Six and then after that council year, if the amendment passes, then it would go back to the current salary it is now, which is 4668. Oh, so it'll be April of 2010. It's not, yep. a, it's not a calendar year, it's a council year, right? That's when it would drop for the, from April of 2010 to April of 2011, correct? No? No? That's not what this says. It's contradictory. Section two and three are different. Yeah, I, I guess what Alderman Montemayor is suggesting would be to uh, say effective for the 2010 2011 council year and thereafter, the salary would be 4668. You're saying right. cur currently it would reduce. But effective next April, it would go for back. the 2010-2011 okay. council year, it would revert back to a current salary, unless the council were to change it again. So you're looking at one period that you're going to reduce then. It would be now until April. Now until April. Okay. Partial. Okay. Partial. Mm -hmm. So this will read end thereafter. Well, if that's the case, all right. Because if that isn't passed, and then it goes past that, the people that are elected in 2010 including everybody in the council, to increase that salary back would take another vote by this body, and it wouldn't go into effect till after they've been in office a year, maybe two years. So right now it's April of 2010. Then it goes back to... Then it goes back. And it goes back. If the <laughs> and it has to be April. Couldn't be January, or December 31st? It's, it's the elected council year. Okay. Yep. All right. Well, uh, just so that that clarification was brought out. President Board. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Uh, I'm going to support. I'm going to support the amendment. And if time, if if times are as tough next April uh, as they are now, I would I would personally support another year of a six percent reduction. But I'm I'm going to uh, support Alderman Montemayor's. Uh, Amendment. Okay, on the amendment only, any further discussion? May we explain the amendment now? I believe what the amendment is, is that uh, basically on section three, effective for the 2010-2011 council year and thereafter, the salaries of all the persons <coughs> shall be 4668 per year. So do you want to do it that way and leave it and thereafter? Okay, we can do that. In this way here, the 6%, the if this is, the amendment is voted for and the 
The uh, ordinances voted for would become effective from now, effective from now until the next council year, which is April of 2010. So Alderman Montemayor, then all you want to change in section three would be the number. Yes. 4668, yeah, would would that would be just fine? To okay. Everybody clear on that? Yeah. Okay, a vote on the amendment only. Do we need a roll call on that? Oh yeah. Roll call please <laughs> on the amendment. Sorry, yes you do. <laughs> on the amendment. Oh yeah. Okay, this is the amendment. Clayunas. Yes. Montemayor. Rinfleisch? No. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Bourne? Aye. Bowers? No. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? No. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. And Kittleson? Aye. So it's 12 ayes and three noes on the amendment. Amendment passes. Um, now on the amended, on the ordinance as amended, any further discussion? Have a roll call on the ordinance yeah. as amended. I don't know if I could make a comment. Um, Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. Just, just a comment to the council. I do think it's important for uh, uh, informed citizens running for alder person to know what the salary is for the upcoming term. Maybe it's important to an individual, maybe it's not to uh, the majority, but maybe it is to an individual. And so I guess what I would suggest is before the council, the next council year, uh, you know, earlier than that, the council should look at it. If you want to change the salary, you might want to do it ahead of time for the new council year, but, but uh, set it so that people, although I guess uh, people would be running by, or filing by November anyway, mm -hmm. so, uh, uh, but I, you know, I think there's a point to, we've got some new older people here that just got elected. And they ran, maybe the salary was important to them, maybe it wasn't, but uh, now uh, if a majority reduces the salary, uh, uh, so be it. That's, uh, you've got the right to do that, but uh, it ha may have an effect on some individuals. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Vice President Gisha. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Uh, I appreciate uh, Attorney McLean's comments, but only outside, only in government is it a suggestion that you let somebody know that their pay might change or not. There are hundreds of citizens in this city, this is no reflection certainly on your comments, Steve, I think they were very appropriate, but there are 100 people, these citizens in this city whose pay went down to zero with no advance warning. There's a number of people who are employed and their pay was reduced or their cost of benefits went up. It happens every day outside of government. Government seems to think there's some sort of guarantee or you're, er or you're owed it or it's, or it's a, uh, an entitlement mentality. Life changes. Businesses adapt. Our community adapts. The only thing that doesn't really adapt is this stuff uh, or adapts very gingerly and slowly. So as far as changing somebody's wage in midstream or increasing somebody's cost of benefits or changing something, that's a fact of life, of everyday life outside of this building. So I see no problem changing it midstream, right after, right before. We are reacting to the economy. We're reacting to the needs of our citizens. Uh, this is a, a fairly modest gesture to say the least, but at least it shows that we're all willing to step up. And uh, if we need to change it again, we should change it again. That's the only way we're gonna survive in our current economic conditions. Thank you, Vice President Gisha. Alderman Rinfleisch. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I guess echoing to some degree, um, Vice President Gisha's uh, comments, I am one of those people that have lost their income salary without any uh, notice or warning. Um, having said that, though, I wholeheartedly support the cutbacks of the 6% as well. Uh, we will be asking, I think, all aspects of the city government to, to look at how we can save and, and as Alderman Decker, as he proposed this, said is, it's not much, but it's the least we can do to show that uh, uh, we're serious about uh, really reforming all of government. The problem I have is now with the, uh, the amendment as we made now. Um, uh, the, the issue generally to raise the salary is a three-quarters uh, motion. 
Uh, we've somehow seemed to have backdoored this to that we will be going up only by majority vote of this uh, agreement. So we, a majority uh, can decrease our salary, uh, but uh, by passing this in a way, it's only majority is gonna increase our salary back next year, which I think is a way around the more appropriate way of having three quarters vote to raise a salary. Um, so I wholeheartedly support it. I will be voting for it because whatever we can do helps. I would have preferred, however, though, that the, uh, um, the salary been permanent um, and then a, a three-quarters majority as usually is required to raise a salary next year or any council thereafter would have ma uh, made that motion to do so as well. So I will support it, but um, uh, like I said, I would have preferred not having the, the amendment in there. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Reed Flesh. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Okay, this is on the ordinance as amended. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Zurich. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Vu. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bowers. Aye. Decker. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Koth. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. And Clyunas. Aye. 14 ayes, 1 no. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law, 5-66, an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Jason Pop and Ryan Messner requesting permission to hold Sheboygan County Rocks Childhood Cancer on August 22nd at Deland Park to benefit St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. That will be referred to PPNS. 5-67, a resolution by Alder Person Kittleson authorizing the repair and reconstruction of sanitary sewers and related pavement repairs in the area of Erie Avenue between 25th Street and 27th Street as the result of a collapsed sanitary sewer. Alder Person Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, first, I would ask uh, for a suspension of the rules on this one. And thank you, and I will explain that because this was an emergency, we all know that what's going up there on Erie Avenue on between 25th and 26th, that uh, it's an emergency, and uh, our Department of Public Works had to spring into action immediately on this one, so uh, there wasn't time to do much, and now we need to uh, authorize our, our finance director to draw on the wastewater fund. That reason being to uh, start, we need to start paying the bills, so. Thank you, any further discussion on the suspension? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, we uh, have the suspension of the rules. And I would ask for a resolution, uh, a motion to put the resolution upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second. Under discussion? President Bourne? Thank you, Mayor Ryan. I know this is an emergency and it's coming, being drawn on the wastewater uh, fund sanitary sewer maintenance account. Uh, is there any idea, just a, a rough idea by Public Works how much this project is going to cost or it's just kind of open-ended because it's an emergency? Right now, um, as they've been moving along, it's my understanding, which Dave Beeble is here, could probably explain it better, but as they're moving along and they're scoping the sewer, they're finding more and more of it has collapsed and it just it seems to be ongoing, luckily heading west. Um, by the way, for public consumption, the uh, gas leak that happened today was not the result of one of our city crews, it was a private contractor that struck the gas main, just so we uh, make that clear. And I do commend our fire department for making sure that uh, everything ended, uh, ended up with no, uh, no injuries there. Um, would you like Dave to speak on that? Yeah, if Dave, if you would wanna make a couple We comments. need a motion to open the floor. Dave Beeble is... Second. Motion and a second to open the floor. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Dave? Um, thank you very much, Mayor and, and Common Council. Uh, real quickly, it, the, the project, we should be winding down. We've, we've televised up to 27th Street. That's where the collapses seem to end. So we should be there by Friday with the repair work. Um, and at this point, talking with the general contractor, as of last week, they expended about $150,000. Um, we had extended another block from 26th to 27th because we found more collapsed sewer. That is estimated between another 50 to 75,000. So we're over 200,000. 
looking at pavement repairs for this entire project right around 100 to 125,000. So it's about in the end around 350 to 400,000 um, dollars expenditure. But it, it, it was a major project, very deep sewers, critical. We had the 30 inch water main that serves the reservoirs on the west side of Sheboygan, as well as the village of Kohler and Sheboygan Falls, as well as the 24 inch water main that was right underneath, or excuse me, above this sewer that serves a large portion of the south side of Sheboygan as well. So it was very critical to get out there, get these sewers repaired to prevent any further sewer backups as well as undermining of these critical water mains. Thank you, Thank you Dave. Any further questions? No further discussion. May we have a roll call, please? Rinfleisch? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. And Montemayor? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. No. 5 68 lies over. 569 to be referred to Public Works. 5-70, a resolution by Alderman Hanna authorizing the use of the parking lot located between Blue Harbor and the Triple Play Building for the annual Roar on the Shore event. Alderman Hanna. Motion to put the uh, resolution upon its passage. Second. Motion and a second under discussion. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Other matters authorized. Will these be on Steve? Steve does these. Other matters, uh, Attorney McLean. Uh, thanks, Mayor. 571 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting communication as a matter of record from Mitzi Schlater of the Sheboygan Park Project informing the council they will be holding their first annual walk and roll event on Sunday, June 14th from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. having a brat fry at Ebenezer UCC, family activities, a one mile walk or roll, and a 5K walk or roll. <laughs> that lies over. 572 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2010 and June 30, 2011. Referred to law and licensing. 573 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2010 and June 30, 2011. Also referred to law and licensing. 574 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Quality State Oil Company, Inc. requesting that a single pole sign be removed so as to make driveway access easier and safer. That will go to public protection and safety. 575 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Loretta Gilbertson regarding her concerns over a compost pile that it's 15 to 20 feet high on the edge of her property. The smell and mold coming from it is very bad. To Public Works. 576 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Sam Guerin, staff representative of AFSCME Wisconsin Council 40, giving a notice of intent for Sheboygan DPW employees, local 2039 AFSCME, wishes to negotiate changes in wages, hours, and working conditions for employees of the city represented by this union. To salary and grievances. 577 is a communication from Mr. Guerin uh, giving a notice of intent for Sheboygan City employees, City Hall Local 1564, wishing to negotiate changes in wages, hours, and working conditions for employees of the city represented by this union. That will also be referred to salary and grievances. Motion is second to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you very much.